Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to our formal supervisor meeting. Uh, supervisor Gates is attending uh, remotely and Supervisor Gallardo is on his way. He should be here shortly. So, clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, thank you. Good morning, Supervisor Hickman. Here. Supervisor Galvin. Here. Supervisor Gates. Here. Supervisor Gallardo will join us later. Chairman Sellers. Here. Thank you. Okay, this morning, uh, the person that's going to do the invocation and pledge for us is a friend of mine and the mayor of Queen Creek, uh, Julia Wheatley. And I'll say a few words after we have the invocation and pledge. Julia. Everyone, please stand. Good morning, and I want to say Chair Sellers and Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, it's a privilege for me to be here this morning, and I appreciate the opportunity to offer the invocation this morning. If you would please join me and bow our heads together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for these individuals that come here and dedicate their time and their resources and their talents to serving us, the people of Maricopa County. We ask you to bestow your guidance, your wisdom upon the Board of Supervisors today as they discuss and make decisions during their meeting. We express our appreciation for the Board as well as the individuals who work for the county for all of their service to us. We are especially grateful for the men and women who serve us as first responders as well as the individuals who serve in our armed forces. We ask you to protect them as they dedicate themselves to keeping us safe. As we begin 2024, I ask for your blessings, for your generosity as we continue out through this new year. And I do say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mayor. And I, I just want to uh, comment that in my job as a county supervisor, I feel like one of the most important things I do is maintain a good relationship with our, our municipalities. And uh, I'm very fortunate in my district to have some very, very good leadership uh, in all of my municipalities. And certainly, uh, Mayor Wheatley is one of the best of the best. Uh, Queen Creek is an extremely fast growing community and it takes really good leadership to keep up with that kind of growth. And they're doing an amazing job. So thank you again for being here. Mr. Chairman, if I may. I just yes, also please. want to thank Mayor Wheatley for coming down here. Um, such a great representative of all the exciting things that are going on in Queen Creek. Congratulations to you and to your fellow council members. And just as you um, honored our staff here today, also congrats <coughs> to your staff for a great job that they do. And thank you for serving. Okay, agenda item number four is the pet showcase. Kim, please introduce us to the star of today's pet showcase. All right, well, it's a good start to the year because the one that I selected is the one that I got to bring. So <laughs> this is Blue. She is about three years old and she arrived at the shelter as a stray on December 21st. So she's coming up on about 20 days at the shelter, but she is a great dog. Uh, if anyone's enjoying this cooler weather, it is definitely Blue or any of the other dozens of Huskies that we have at the shelter. Uh, she did a attend an offsite adoption event this 
<laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Come on, Blue. She's very excited. She really wants to join the board, but I told her she's a little late in running. Um, she is very excited. If I had to guess, she would love a big backyard to run around in because, as you can see, she loves to explore. Uh, but she did attend an off-site adoption event this weekend. Everyone loved her. She greeted everybody. She was super friendly. She just hasn't found her right person. So hopefully they're watching, or, and hopefully they come to the shelter today because she's already spayed, which means she can go home right away. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, she, she, does, she doesn't want to leave. I don't walk her. <laughs> Your arms are going to get longer. <laughs> Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Chairman Supervisors, I do have one announcement to make. It is regarding item number 41, the precinct committee men. Um, just to let you know, the list has been amended. We received an amended list overnight from the um, elections department. That is all I have, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number five is speak up, stand up, save a life proclamation. Madam Clerk, will you please read the proclamation? Yes, thank you. Whereas the Speak Up, Stand Up, Save a Life movement presents an ideal opportunity to help bridge the gap between young people, local communities, government entities, and law enforcement in a positive way. And whereas our local schools are facing unnecessary tragedies, where warning signs are visible on social media or observed in person, but are not being reported as serious threats or cries for help. And whereas our youth need to be empowered to report concerning social media posts or comments to school representatives or law enforcement. And adults can receive training to help spread the message it is okay, okay to care enough to speak up, stand up, and save a life. And whereas students from 169 Arizona schools have learned the message and created student-led impact projects in their schools and communities that have impacted over 500,000 youth. Now therefore be it resolved that the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaim the month of January 2024 as Speak Up, Stand Up, Save a Life Month and be it further resolved that the Maricopa County schools, students, parents, educators, police departments, and community organizations are encouraged to engage in a variety of awareness and prevention activities designed to make our communities safer for all children and adolescents. Chairman, if I may, before you move forward with this item, I do have one speaker form from Mike Peterson to speak in favor of item number five. May I begin? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Overall, as you guys may remember from my last trip here, I do occasionally work for 273 Talk during the Christmas weekend. And I can say that this is overall a positive program, but I do have concerns that it may in fact be used and weaponized by teachers that have grudges against particular students or particular parents, particularly if they have beliefs that don't align with said teachers, because as we are all well aware, the teachers union is a very, very active force and they have been known to interfere with parenting on multiple levels. And it is possible that this could be used as a form of bullying from some students against somebody that they just want to see doxxed or teachers and we need to make sure that there's safeguards involved if you're trying to save somebody's life you want to make sure that they at least have dignity and privacy to go with it and that this isn't going to be something that marks their permanent record because if someone's mislabeled as being a threat to themselves or a threat to others by being mislabeled that they just became that my big concern is that I just don't see any safeguards to keep it from being weaponized. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Any board members have comments on this item? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I, will, I apologize for not being there in person. 
I am on my way right now. I was stuck on a on another Zoom meeting that took a little bit longer than I anticipated. But nonetheless, I just want to thank once again, Mr. Chairman, for placing this on the agenda. I think this is something that is such a necessity right now. As, as many of you know, I work real closely with a lot of young people, uh, mostly in, in the athletic uh, area. But I, I hear and I see the challenges that many of our kids face every day, socially and economically, every day I see it. Let it be on the campus, uh, dealing with issues among students, let it be off campus. You've seen the recent stories uh, in the news, particularly out in Gilbert, uh, where you have students uh, kind of just jumping on each other violently. You see it out in the North Valley as well. You see it out even in my district. And it's something that we need to really start to listen to our young people, listen to, to some of the issues that they're facing and try to deal with some of the social issues that they're dealing with as well. Um, a lot of times these kids uh, are just looking for a little help. A lot of times these kids are just looking for a little direction. And I think it's upon us, it's a responsibility of everybody to reach out to those young people that need help. They're looking for help. They're looking for guidance. And, and growing up is much different, I believe, now than when I grew up in, in the household I grew up in. So I just want to thank you for bringing this in. I know uh, Supervisor Hickman uh, brought it the very first time because of an incident out in, in uh, his district, Independent High School. Uh, I'm like maybe a mile and a half from Independent High School. I'm not far from Independent High School where I live. Um, but it, it really does highlight uh, the challenges that many of these kids face. Um, it keeps us uh, engaged with these young people, and I think that's the important thing. If we can save a young person's life, help them from hurting themselves or others, bravo. I think this is well, well needed. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman, for bringing it forward. I look forward to approving this resolution and moving it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, Madam Clerk, we have a guest speaker on this. Yes, uh, Chairman. Shelby Duplessis, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing right. that correctly. She is here representing uh, Stand Up, Speak Up, Save a Life, and she would like to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, my name is Shelby Duplessis. I'm a former, I'm the former president of Leadership West, and out of this program, Stand Up, Speak Up, Save a Life was founded by three of our members. I have proudly served on this board now for seven years for Stand Up, Speak Up, Save a Life, and it actually came out of the incident at Independence High School that Supervisor Garado was just speaking about. It's just us wanting to help make a difference in the school. It's our seventh year having a summit, which is this month, uh, January 30th at G uh, GCU. Uh, we would like to invite all of you to attend. Um, we, we impact w and work with actually directly 169 schools a year and approximately 3,000 students. They all come together for a day and learn how to have the safeguard actually to remove that stigmatism and to remove the bullying and to feel safe to say something when they see something, when they're worried about their friends, instead of worrying about being a tattletale, but actually engaging their parents and their mentors to help them to engage. It's very difficult, especially I feel in this time in the world to be a young teenager. There's so many influences with social media um, and just bullying in general. So to be able to help them as they grow, um, a lot of hormone changes, and just to give them that guidance and resources that they don't know even exist. Um, and so that's what we're doing and um, we've been doing and enjoy making that impact. So thank you so much for um, giving us this proclamation. It's much appreciated and helps us to serve the community even better. So thank you. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, yeah, Supervisor. Shelby, thank you for coming. Yes. Um, I know how hard you've worked on this and I appreciate all the uh, time and effort you spend in the West Valley yes. uh, on, on different issues like this. Uh, yeah, I, I can easily remember seven years ago when this when this tragic incident happened uh, with a relationship basically that went bad through adolescence and it and it was uh, violent uh, and death on a on a high school campus that I grew up uh, only a, a mile away. So um, when you talk about weaponization, this is exactly the answer to 
when everyone says, why if somebody would have just said something? And you guys have set this program up to make it easier for kids to talk about this and to tell somebody in a responsible position, you might want to know what's going on here before something goes bad. So uh, I have not ever heard of anything about this being part of bullying behavior. It's actually where a chance where a shy kid can come and say what's going on in that classroom uh, and feel safe to do it and to invite adults to help the situation before it turns violent or incredibly sad. I remember the phone call that Mayor Wires made to me uh, because it happened in his city, in Glendale. I appreciate Gina Godby here um, that worked to get this. I appreciate that this continues to grow and hearing about the, uh, the meeting that you put and it's the ever expanding attendance at GCU to inform these people in responsible positions what's going on and how we can all help as adults uh, get our kids through a trying time. Right. School, high school, relationship building, while they're adolescents, while they're juveniles, and they need adults uh, supervision. Don't, don't put those signs up, please. I, I, have, I can go 30 minutes on this topic about protecting, protecting the adolescents by, by protecting adolescents and the safety of these children. So Shelby, thank you so much for being here today and taking your time to talk to us about it. Thank, thank you, you so Mr. Much. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor. Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Gellin. Shelby, good to see you. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I don't know how you do it because you're so busy doing a million different things, but thank you for being a productive member of our community, someone who helps people. Um, the work that you and Gina Godby here are doing is just absolutely incredible, and you're impacting kids' lives on a daily basis. So I'm proud to sign this proclamation. I'm proud of the work that you do, and keep going, and congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other comments from board members? Mr. Chairman, would you like a motion to? I would enter entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to approve the uh, item number five, the Speak Up, Stand Up, Save a Life proclamation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. That motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before we go on, I, I will mention that, uh, that my policy on uh, bringing water into the auditorium will be, we will accept you bringing in clear water bottles, the same that we have here at the dives. So that will be my policy. This will start with our next meeting. Thank you. All right, let's go. Okay, item number six. Statutory hearings, clerk of the board, are there any registered speakers or comments received on item six through 11? Chairman, I have none for these items. The board will now consider item six through 11. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, noting that there are so many in my district, I will make the motion to approve item six through 11. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Un under statutory hearings, sheriff, video recording processing fees by legal li liaison section. Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items 12, on item 12? Chairman, none were received for item number 12. The board will now consider item number 12. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve item number 12. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county officers, board of supervisors, items 13 through 17, appointments and reappointments to Deferred Compensation Committee, Planning and Zoning Commission, Industrial Development Authority Board of Directors, 
Board of Health, Regional Public Transportation Authority. Chairman, I have a few speaker forms for items 13 through 17. Okay. If you would like me, I, would, I can start with item number 15. I have a speaker form from Leslie for item number 15. And item 15 is the Industrial Development Authority Board of Directors. Okay. Lee Landrum Taylor is an interim director of the Arizona Commission of African American Affairs and a Reverend uh, Redeem Robinson speak about reparations of the government prayer breakfast. So basically the nutshell version is I look at all these, if people looked at these sites and were to see what involvement she had, you would not be appointing her. But I doubt that you're gonna look at that because I don't think you guys look at anything. You just come up here and do what you're gonna do. Jack, I appreciate that you're making it so that we can have clear water bottles when we come in here. This very thing that Hickman was incapable of letting us do. It's strange that I can't walk back there right now, which is what I attempted to do, and get my water, bo water bottle, but they said, that's at the next meeting, Leslie. So don't you think that's a little strange, Jack? You could change that right now. Why would we wait until next, next one? You guys don't look at this stuff in, right here about the concerns that they should make for our country in appointing key people. But oh, you better keep that dreaded water bottle from the, those of us coming in here. So is there a reason why you can't just let me go back and get my water bottle right now? The announcement that I made was for next meeting because I, I need for everyone to know the same rule before we change it. Well, we heard it, we're pretty smart. I know that you guys aren't looking at these websites that makes you concerned about these people. So I would just ask you to remember, if you're gonna be concerned about people, be concerned about people that are, look at these websites, she's right here, it's very dangerous, but you're gonna, guys gonna appoint her, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Chairman, also on item number 15, Janice Schmidt. In opposition. Yes, from what I understand, this um, this person that you're appointing has connections to BLM, which we know is a Marxist organization that has no place in, in Arizona under our constitution. Their ideals do not match up with your constituents. They don't match up with the, um, what we hold true to our constitution. And this person has no place in our government. Thank you. Also on item number 15, Jeff Caldwell in opposition. Good morning, Chair of Supervisors. As Leslie was saying, um, Leah Landrum Taylor, when she was the um, deputy intern um, directi Deputy Director of uh, the um, Arizona Commission of African American Affairs had Reverend Redeem Robinson speak about reparations at the Governor Prayer Breakfast on February 9th of 2023. On Reverend's Twitter X account, he also thanked her for this opportunity. <coughs> And this was also something for Katie Hobbs. Furthermore, Reverend Redeem Robinson has a clip of one of his speeches and the video clip he uploaded himself on his YouTube account is called, We're Coming For Our Check. And it's only a minute and a half. So if you guys wanna look at it, it won't take too much of your time, but you are about to appoint somebody who potentially supports 
giving billions of dollars to people for things that we today are not responsible for. And I do have concerns that uh, there have been past um, racial differences in this country and it's very concerning to me. I do not support that. But what I also do not support is uh, socialism or Marxism in order to help destroy this country. While Redeem Robinson gave this speech in his clip, he is wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt with his uh, reverend uh, collar on. Uh, so it, it is extremely concerning to me that um, Leah is about to be appointed. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, also on item 16, Jeff, Mr. Jeff Caldwell, item number 16, reappointment to the Board of Health. Chair Supervisors, I wish uh, Supervisor Gates was here. Uh, this is to appoint, reappoint Supervisor Bill Gates to the Board of Health to represent Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. Now the problem with this is I honestly don't know who I would accept as an appointment uh, for this position from the current Board of Supervisors. Uh, the only person that um, may qualify is Mr. Galvin uh, because Supervisor Gates supported the lockdowns and mask mandates. He voted for the mask mandates in Maricopa County. So I, I do not support anyone who supported those efforts during that time. I was against the lockdowns before the lockdowns happened. I called the mayor of Kansas City out on Twitter. He has blocked me. Um, I've been against the mask mandates before the mask mandates came. I accurately predicted every governmental uh, maneuver through COVID and it destroyed our nation. We had an inflationary bailout from the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve telling the governments to lock people down because they had the necessary means in order to bail us out. Well, now we're dealing with those consequences. We're having high interest rates. We cannot have somebody on these boards that cannot foresee what the government's uh, detrimental actions are gonna cause to our country. And this is not just regional. Maricopa County is one of the largest municipalities in the entire nation. So this is actually an international problem and I do not support Supervisor Gates being on this board at all. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a few more, um, Chairman. Item number 16 is the reappointment to the Board of Health. Also in opposition, Janice Schmidt. I strongly oppose uh, um, reappointing Mr. Gates to this position. Um, just like um, Jeff here, I was out protesting the masks, the lockdowns, the vaccines. Um, he has no regard for public health. We know now that we were all correct that the lockdowns were gonna do nothing but hurt people and um, hurt small businesses. We lost a lot of small businesses here in Arizona because they were forced to lock down. And meanwhile, Walmart and Target and Amazon are thriving and um, that we know now that the masks not only harmed individuals health but they harmed our children's education because they couldn't see faces they didn't learn how to pronounce things um, they're still scared of people that smile at them the ones that grew up around these toddlers that grew up with masks on um, we know now that the shots are killing people you can't call them vaccines because they're genetic modifiers they are not true vaccines and we knew that before they came out you guys um, approved mandating them and and now we're dealing with the deaths resulting from those things so there's no way that this person should be approved to a board of health he has no regard for public health thank you uh, also on number 17 Ms. Schmidt, uh, Janice Schmidt in opposition item 17 is the regional public transportation authority oh, same thing with this this person supports the um, now I forgot the term, the 
traffic modifications that are supposed to slow down traffic and and support the bicycle lanes and what you guys have done to Fifth Avenue where that has already happened, where they reduce the lanes, they put in those bike lanes. I travel that route a lot. I have never seen a bicycle on that route, but I have seen traffic back up now on that route because the lanes are restricted. If you wanna go, if you're going north on Fifth and you wanna take a right on McDowell, now you have to wait longer because the bike lane is in the way and you spent money on putting all those little things, those little, I don't know what you call them, they're like traffic cones, but they're posts. I've seen people hit those, I've seen them destroyed and then replaced, I've seen new traffic signals put in, and it's just all a bunch of waste of money. This um, procedure has increased traffic accidents in other um, states, it hasn't reduced the um, traffic congestion, it's actually made it worse on the places where they've restricted this traffic and then it's made more traffic because people avoid those routes and clog up other routes. So, and it's also another thing that has hurt small businesses. So there's, this person supports that and, um, and we don't need it here in Arizona. It's hurting other cities and other places. So I think you should reconsider the appointment of this person. Thank you. Also on item number 17, in opposition, we have Leslie, followed by Mr. Jeff Caldwell. All right. You need to eliminate your road diets, or should I say, uh, setting us up for the 15-minute city crap. Um, policy is being implemented with the vi uh, Vision Zero. It completes the streets and the street pre uh, preservation projects. We, you, we need you to stop expanding the bus rapid transit. I have no problem with this, uh, this being right outside here. The problem is you have nothing for handicap. You have absolutely no consideration for respecting the American Disabilities Act happening right outside where we call the Court of Justice around here and the Board of Supervisors who is supposed to look, be looking out for us. So if you're gonna be like implementing all this other garbage, which is garbage, he literally broke down what the problem was with it, why don't you put some money into making it more accessible for people to come here and actually speak to you guys regardless of their limitations? So I wasn't called up for another one, so that's fine. But um, the key thing is, is we're gonna watch who's gonna first the motion, who's gonna second the motion. We're never surprised that Bill Gates and Steve Glargo isn't here. We do know that you still have no webinar so that we, the people, can come in, call in our comments about these things. But boy, you still have your double standard for yourself. How's that water going there, Hickman? <laughs> Jeff Caldwell. Chair Supervisors, so Supervisor um, Sellers, please research this topic, okay? I talked about this previously, and if you go to the Wayback Machine, you have to plug it in uh, to see the article. But the article is from um, the Department of Transportation. It is from about a decade and a half ago. And it actually did studies on cities that implemented road diets. And it actually compared before and after. It's a study, our tax dollars uh, went into it. For some reason, it was deleted off of the Department of Transportation's website for some reason, even though um, the road diets had already been implemented and it was a real study. So. Um, you'll have to go back to the previous meeting that I talked to this talked about this because uh, my my computer's not loading the the article. But what it says is, if you implement road diets on streets that have over twenty five thousand vehicles, it causes congestion. It is the only article that I have seen from the government that says that. Um, and it is accurate. If you actually look outside, there's a road diet because of construction. And there's terrible traffic in order to turn into the, um, the parking garage. So road diets do cause traffic congestion. Um, the tra traffic congestion leads to more accidents, more uh, injuries, 
And so please stop implementing road diets. That's all I, that's all I can ask for from, from this board. Thank you very much. The board will now consider items 13 through 17. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve items 13 through 17, but I particularly want to highlight number 13, um, the appointment of Bridget Harper to the Deferred Compensation Committee. I appreciate Bridget's willingness to serve District 2 on the Smart Savings Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Steve? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll be walking in right now. I'm, I'm, I just pulled into the garage. But I do want to uh, not only second the motion, but really want to make a quick comment about uh, uh, Leah Landrum Taylor. Leah Landrum Taylor is a dear friend, and she has been a uh, dedicator. She has dedicated her entire life to public service and servicing the people of, of, of her community and the state of Arizona. She has worked with multiple governors on both sides of the aisles there at the state legislature. I've served with her in both the House and in the Senate. Uh, she has been involved in so many different community activities. She is a pillar of the South Phoenix area. Uh, I just want to thank her for being, being able to uh, take time out of her busy schedule to be part of, of this commission. I want to thank her for continuing to do the service she does. Uh, I just had a conversation with her yesterday. We're working on the MLK luncheon. So I just had a discussion with her uh, yesterday. We're talking about Martin Luther King weekend and all the things that we're planning together. So I just want to thank Leah once again for all the work she has done on behalf of the people of Maricopa County, the state of Arizona, and South Phoenix. She has just has been just a jewel and, a, and just someone so dear to work with. I call her a friend, a colleague. She, she continues to do great work, and I'm just so honored to be able to have her uh, be representing District 5 on this commission. Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Supervisor Gates. Yeah, thank you. First of all, just wanted to note for the record that I am here uh, at the meeting, uh, appearing virtually. Um, uh, but first of all, I wanted to say thank you very much to Captain Matt Summers of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, who has been willing to represent District 3 on the Deferred Compensation Committee. And I also wanted to thank Kevin Curley uh, for his willingness to serve and represent District 3 on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, I think many of us know uh, and loved Mike Curley, uh, the late great Mike Curley, and Kevin is Mike's uh, son and looking forward to his service on Planning and Zoning Commission. Thank you, Bill. Any other questions, comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, I wanna uh, make sure that uh, I voice my approval uh, for all of these people, but specifically my colleagues, um, Jack Sellers to the Public Transportation Authority and, uh, and Supervisor Gates to the Board of Health. You know, we are elected to these positions and some of these positions require um, our uh, effort um, to, serve in these roles uh, to basically kind of also not only uh, enhance the experience, but also uh, keep an eye on some of these commissions and be able to use these commissions in order uh, to affect change. And I think that Bill and, and you do a great job. I would remind people that we are elected to these roles by thousands of voters in our districts thousands of voters in our districts based on our skill level that we have shown in life. So thank you both for being willing to continue to be appointed to these commissions and uh, affect change and the growth of Maricopa County. So did you get a second yet? I did. Okay. And, and please, you know, I, I've shown respect to all of the speakers from the audience. Please show respect when the board is speaking or we will have to make some changes. All in favor of the uh, items 13 through 17, aye. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those items pass, thank you. Okay, next items. 
18 through 23, Clerk of the Board. 1819, Special Event License for Wisconsin Club of Sun City. Central Arizona Mountain Bike Patrol Association under Clerk of the Court. Item 20, Appointments. 21, Constables Appointments. Item 22, County Attorney Grant Funding from Arizona Stop Violence Against Women. Item number 23, School Superintendent Budget Adjustment. The board will now consider items 18 through 23. Excuse me, Chairman, I do have a few speaker forms on items 20 and 21. Okay. First speaker is Leslie on item number 20. I wasn't sure if you guys realized that you got seven people that are backdated to October 16th, 2023. You got four people backdated from October 30th, 2023. Um, nine people backdated from November, 2023. So we can go on down the list here because there are a lot more. So these are backdated people who were supposed to have had some type of official thing done for that they can actually show that they are going to uphold and protect and they're just now getting sworn in. Oh, the next list is gonna be great when we get up here. We got people back to 2020. Nice of you to make it here, Steve. If we don't make it here on time, we don't get to speak. If we don't come here, we don't get to speak. But yet, he gets to come here via webinar, you get to come here via webinar, and you still get to be part of this. And if people have a problem with it that sit next to me right here, I don't really care. Because you don't really care what we think. Because we got up here, every person that came up front told you how they didn't approve of that last stuff. You never listen to the people, ever. And again, how nice of you to appoint these people months after they've been into effect. The next one will be even sweeter when it's four years later. Jack, you are a much kinder than Clint Hickman by far. And I'm sure that Thomas Galvin is gonna try and restrain himself from trying to handle you because you're not gonna deal with us the way that Clint Hickman is so disrespectful. Jeff. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Jeff Caldwell in opposition, item number 20. <clears throat> Chair Supervisors, as Leslie stated, there are many backdated um, approvals for their oaths of office here. And so, I am just asking for the county to clarify the legality behind um, not having the oaths of office of people um, for, for extended amounts of time, because it's very concerning. These people are um, appointed and represent we the people. And I'm so, I, I read the ARS, it doesn't say anything regarding timeframes. Uh, so I am unfamiliar with the policy <clears throat> of, of waiting to swear people in. Um, the city of Phoenix swears people in the same day that they get appointed. So <clears throat> I'm, I don't know exactly what policy or statute um, you're following regarding the appointments and holding back the um, oaths of office. So if Maricopa County can clarify that, that would be great. Thank you very much. I would just comment here that all of these appointments are coming from other elected officials, that the Board of Supervisors approval is a formality. We, we, are not, we are not directly responsible for the other elected offices. Ray Michaels, item number 20. Hello, Ray Michaels, uh, LD Chair of Legislative District 8 with uh, Thomas Galvin. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so uh, because this is a mere formality, I think that this is the time where the Board of Supervisors can actually take a stand 
and stand for the people of not only the county, but for Arizona, because I'm gonna read directly from Arizona Revised Statutes 38291, number nine, where it says, failure of the person elected or appointed to the office to file the person's official oath within the time prescribed by law. This is in our statute for the state. If this, is, if this is truly a formality, then say, no, we cannot do this because it's going directly against Arizona Revised Statute. It says, the office shall be deemed vacant from and after the occurrence of any of the following events before the expiration of their term of office. They're, they're not even in office. They did not file this according to statute. So if it is a formality, and with all due respect, you need to take a stand and say, we as a board cannot do this because it is specifically going against statute. I'll repeat it one more time, 38291, number nine. Thank you. Mr. Ray Michaels on item number 21. Thank you. Item number 21, again, this is official appointments and oaths of office for the duty constables. Again, uh, we're going back. One person is effective as of September 8th, 2020, April 4th, 2022, 22, 23, 23. Somebody hasn't submitted their oath of office since 2020. How do we have statutes which are our current laws in the state of Arizona, but people are representing us, making decisions on behalf of we the people, yet they haven't done the simple process of taking an oath pursuant to the guidelines that we already have in place. Either we are a nation of laws or we're a nation of chaos. So either we follow the rules or we don't. So I'm wondering, is this also the formality that you spoke about? So listen, I don't mind if we wanna change the rules, if we the people ask our elected officials, but what's hard is that you are representing we the people, your servants, just as I am. I represent thousands of people in my district, but I always acknowledge that I serve them. It's not for me to decide on their behalf, it's for them to tell me how they would like me to represent them. You see, we are not a democracy. Nope. We are a constitutional representative republic. And as a republic, we have rules, we have the constitution, we have our laws, we have our statutes. And I'm not here to preach to you because you already know this. I'm just asking you, why aren't we following the rules that are already in place? Because if we can't all follow the same rules, then it does become chaos. Thank you. I will mention that each one of these people would have taken the oath of office before they serve. One more speaker, Chairman, on item number 21, Jeff Caldwell in opposition. Chair Supervisors, Chairman, I greatly appreciate you answering my question. Um, but a follow-up question is, does Maricopa County have to accept their oath of office formally um, to recognize them? Because even though they did submit their oaths of office to a um, different entity and it's been filed, there is a reason why you are accepting these and putting them in, into the docket. So um, if it's just a formality, then it should have already been accepted and done. So I strongly recommend the Board of Supervisors create a um, policy where any oaths of office have to be submitted in order to be accepted for the next Board of Supervisors meeting. That is that is my strong suggestion here because like Mr. Ray Michael stated, there is a person that was um, from September 8th of 2020. And um, if Maricopa County has to accept and file these oaths of offices, it has to be for a reason rather than just, you know, willy-nilly. There is a reason. Otherwise, we wouldn't be 
talking about it and it wouldn't be on the agenda. So again, um, I, I'm very concerned, <laughs> uh, even though they have already submitted their oaths of office, um, I, I do believe that there is a reason and I think Ray Michaels hit on it. So I do greatly appreciate you answering the question. I hope you'd take my consideration and suggestion and uh, implement it, thank you. Chairman, I don't have any other speaker forms. I have one for Leslie for item 20 and a blank one. No, we're on 21. I have no other speaker forms. Okay, the board will now consider right items 18 through 23. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 18 through 23. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, moving on to sheriff. Item number 24, amend agreement with Flock Group Incorporated. Items 25 through 26, except state criminal alien assistance funding, grant funds from Department of Justice. Items 27 and 28, agreements with Drug Enforcement Administration and the Arizona Department of Homeland Security. Item 29, IGA with City of Phoenix. Item number 30, one-time additions to fleet. Item 31, donations. Chairman, I do have a few speaker forms for items 20, I'm sorry, it's just for item number 25. We can start with um, Leslie. Item number 25. Just wanting to make sure you guys understand this makes it so that they can actually take pictures of our license plates and keep track of where we're going and what geography we're going. Are you aware of that, Mr. Steve? I forgot you don't hear. Jack, are you aware of that? Just a little nod, one way? Yes, no, maybe not. You aware of that? Mr. Galvin, and I'm pretty sure you don't care, Hickman, so I won't even ask you. This right here is surveillance. This is setting us up for the 15-minute cities so that when we start going after outside of our geographic location, they can start docking us for it. People don't realize that that's what you're setting it up for. This is what you're need. You might even have somebody comes up and said, oh, this is gonna help us to find criminals. It's like this. You create a problem and then you so-called find a solution. We got people pouring into our country right now, undocumented, fighting age men. That should be more of a concern to you than worrying about our license and where we go, when probably Galvin will be the one. I'm gonna make a motion. I don't know how to show up to a PC meeting, but I'll make a motion against the people. So I'm just letting you guys know, what you're doing is you're actually going to help usher in the 15 minute cities. Everything you've been doing up here, even this thing when you said formalities, and Jack, again, I can't commend you enough for being a lot more respectful than Hickman. So that being said, you guys, when you're saying you're doing these things for formality, even you saying that, you understand this is a public meeting, a public board of supervisors meeting. We are the governing authority, you are the public servants. So when we come up here and we tell you guys, please don't choose this, and then you immediately do, and then you put in things that really don't need to be here, but it makes us wait longer to get to public comments. Now it's starting to become a little bit more clear. I appreciate that. Have a good day until I see you next. Also on item 25, Jeff Caldwell in opposition. Chair Supervisors, first and foremost, this is not about police officers. This is not about um, attacking our men in, in uniform here. <clears throat> this is about our personal freedoms and liberties. <clears throat> What you are going to potentially rebut with is this help secure and uh, bring in safety. I, I am very concerned about this. Uh, this is equivalent to facial recognition, but for vehicles. Yeah. 
the, this system is tied to an AI um, database that once municipalities and uh, HOAs opt in, they have access to over 2,500 dis different municipalities across the entire United States. And um, these systems create what are called vehicle fingerprints, which they record and um, uh, implement what uh, bumper stickers. So like if anyone has like a 2A bumper sticker or a Second Amendment bumper sticker, uh, an AR-15 bumper sticker, that's documented in this thing. And so Leslie is correct uh, in um, um, Oxford, England, they implemented license plate readers in order to keep people in their 15 minute walking neighborhood. This is legit. This is from Oxford, England. And every time that somebody leaves that 15 minute walking area, they are fined equivalent to $90 every single time. So the only way that you get away around it is if you go around the city, which actually creates more pollution, which makes no sense whatsoever. Um, I know that you're gonna say it's for our safety, but the way that you solve this is you secure the border and you hire more police officers. You have more money than God when it comes to our security. You have the ability to dictate to our cities to hire more police officers. Janice Schmidt on item number 25 will be followed by our last speaker on this item, Mike Peterson. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Um, I don't understand why you lump agenda items together like this instead of voting on them each individually because there might be something in there that, that you don't agree with, but you're just lumping them together instead of separating them. So I, this is my first time at one of these high agenda items, so I don't, I don't understand the system. Um, I agree with everything that Jeff said. This is setting up the infrastructure to send us into this new world order 15 minute city yeah. thing. And it may sound like it's gonna protect our safety and catch these criminals on the streets, but what we need is more police officers and we need border security. We don't need our personal data going off to some uh, outside agency. It's not even going to be to someone who's taken an oath to, to protect our Constitution. It's going out to some other entity and there's been all kinds of data breaches and hackings and who knows where our personal information is gonna go and, um, and this is just another way to track and trace everybody and it, it is a violation of our Fourth Amendment rights. And I'm extremely opposed to this and what you're doing by approving this is setting us up for that. And I can't imagine that you guys would want that in your personal lives, because we certainly don't want it. Thank you. Mike Peterson. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, <laughs> this, what you've heard about what happened with Oxford, England and the $90 fees, that's the nice version of England using municipal travel re restrictions. What it leads to after that, after the travel and going out of your lane fees, the next thing that comes up is a circular food system. And with the circular food system, we all know what England did to Northern Ireland. Everybody's restricted to their 15 minute walking zone while England ends up taking all the food out of Northern Ireland from the farmers by armed guard, and guess what? England borrowed this policy from Russia. And you know who Russia did this to? Turkey, Ukraine, Belarus, and all these countries are connected to an event called the Holdemor. So what you're doing with all these restrictions on our ability to move around, keeping us confined, keeping us from being able to survive, continuing to break the lives of men and women and even children because when you keep suppressing freedom, when you keep suppressing people's ability to do business, I'm on the other end of the line on Christmas at 273 Talk listening to people complaining about how their pre-2020 business model was ruined by you guys, how their way of life was ruined by you guys, and a lot more kids than ever who have no hope, 
because they see what's happening to their adults in their life, that their lives are being ruined by, again, you guys. So I would like to not thank you guys for ruining my fourth Christmas in a row. And I would also like to say, if you wanna do this, this is completely in line with your policy. Remember these names come August, they tried to move the primary up from March to March because they don't wanna get, what's the word? Primary. Thank you. I have no other speaker forms, Chairman. The board will now consider items 24 through 31. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 24 through 31. Mr. Chairman, I'll um, make a second with a comment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, item number 24, the amendment with the flock uh, camera system uh, was requested of me by the Sun City uh, Homeowners Association and the, Sun, the entire Sun City leadership in an unincorporated area because they are very concerned with the uh, people that happen to be cutting through or being in that small community uh, where there's their light on patrol. It's the sheriff's office, it's unincorporated. It's a lot of miles to cover for very few officers uh, to cover it with. They are working in tandem with the uh, sheriff's office to do a study uh, to see if they can find out by using cameras and license plates to make sure that their cars aren't being stolen while they are, uh, I don't know, um, living in their other communities. Um, so they're concerned about their safety, they wanna use technology and they wanna study it. Um, so that's, uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate this uh, coming to this level right now and uh, being able to participate in the study with the sheriff's department. Thank you, Supervisor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, item number 32, adult probation. Addition of adult probation positions. Under Justice Court, item 33, accept funding from Arizona Criminal Justice Commission. Under juvenile probation, item number 34, permanent additions to the fleet. Under superior court, item 35, correction of budget amendment approval. We have no speakers on this item. I would entertain a motion for items 32 through 35. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 32 through 35. We have a motion. Second. And a second from Supervisor Gates. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, under county management, assistant county manager, item 36, resignation and appointment of Maricopa County Workforce Development Board members. We have no speakers on this item. The board will now consider item 36. Move to approve item number 36, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That motion carries. Under county offices, animal care and control, item 37, establish administrative bank account and budget adjustment. Item 38, new hope agreement with Heart of Infinity Foundation. Under correctional health, Items 39 and 40, amend IGAs with Arizona Healthcare Cost Containment System and MOU with Arizona Complete Health, Complete Care Plan. The board will now consider items 37 through 40. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 37 through 40 with um, a note of appreciation for our Animal Control Department for the work that they do. Thank you, Supervisor. We have a motion. Uh, Second. Uh, Bill got me. And a second from Supervisor Gates. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under county offices, elections. Number 41, precinct committeemen. And we do have, Kirk, we have an amendment on this item. 
Yes, Chairman, I made an announcement earlier that the list has been amended. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the amended uh, item number 41. Wow. Second. So bipartisan. <laughs> we, have, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'm not sure if I've ever heard you make know, the original the motion on that. For everything, huh? <laughs> that part of your New Year's resolution? That's right. There you go. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Okay, under emergency management, item 42, amend agreement related to grant funds from Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs. Under environmental services, item number 43, amend IGA with City of Phoenix. Item 44, Paloma Irrigation District Agreement. Finance, under finance, item 45, ARPA expenditure approval and budget adjustments. Item 46, funds transfers warrants. Item 47, mid-year pay for performance adjustment. Under human resources, item 48, amend premium pay rates. And item 49, market ranges. Chairman, I do have one speaker form for item number 48 in opposition, and it looks like Luke Portel. Yeah, Leslie wasn't kidding when you guys, when she said you guys don't read anything. <clears throat> so I wanna read what this is actually is, and I'll tell you what it is. Approve the Maricopa County premium rates effective as of two days ago, Human Resources recommends adding security special assignment pay. These premium pay rates apply to the county's elected officials, appointed departments, judicial branch of Maricopa County, which receives funding from the county, the flood control district of Maricopa County, I don't have to go through the rest of it. Basically what you guys are doing is you guys are giving yourselves a pay raise. That's, what's, that's what this is. That is illegal use of taxpayer money. And I will be, and I will be getting every one of your guys' blanket bonds, because I understand every elected official in the state and local government is insured through what they call a surety bond or an insurance bond. And I will be pulling every one of your insurance bonds, going all the way up to Katie Hobbs, Adrian Fontes. You guys are wasting money. And I thought Illinois was bad. Holy shit, this is worse than Illinois. This is ridiculous. I fled communism once. And I feel like it's here. Well, it is here. And you guys are helping contribute to it. We have a wide open border that is being flooded with fentanyl, weapons and whatever else you wanna call it. We have homelessness all over the place. I don't know if you guys go up to Jefferson Street, we got all these homeless camps and you guys are gonna give yourselves a raise. That's ridiculous. And I recommend everybody to stop paying taxes and I will help you guys go through that process. And if you want to also talk to Sophia Zori, she'll help you as well, thank you. No other speaker forms, Chairman. Board will now consider items 42 through 49. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 42 through 49. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. I didn't hear Bill Gates vote. I did. Okay, uh, please, no outbursts from the audience. Under human services, item 50, agreements with Arizona Department of Economic Security, items 51 through 55, amend IGAs and agreements with Gilbert Public School District, Queen Creek Unified School District, Arizona Fire and Medical Authority Community Development Block Grant Activities, HOM Incorporated, Arizona Food Bank Network. Item 56, budget realignment for student nurse workforce practice readiness programs activity. Item 57, city of Peoria exhibitor application. The board will now consider items 50 through 57. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Okay, under human services continued, 58, 
and 59, rescind and replace IGAs with City of Surprise and Kyrene School District. Item 60 through 63, IGAs with City of Goodyear, City of Glendale, Kyrene School District number 28, Town of Wickenburg, under Planning and Development, item 64, resolution extending the moratorium on increased regulatory burdens. Chairman, I do have a few speaker forms on item number 61 and item number 62. Item 61 is the IGA with City of Glendale. Item 62, IGA with Kyrene School. Janice Schmidt would like to speak in opposition for item number 61. Only if necessary, because I don't know a whole lot about this subject, but I am opposed to the government getting involved in development. That should be a private business thing, and every time the government gets involved, prices go up. We end up spending more of our tax dollars on things that should be left to um, private enterprise. Thank you. Next on item number 61, Jeff Caldwell in opposition. Chair Supervisors, uh, the comments that you're hearing from the audience today, I believe is gonna be for item 60. So I think there was an item that was deleted off the agenda or something. Um, but um, this is for 261 new affordable, un I'm speaking on 60, so it's gonna be for the affordable housing opportunities in uh, good, good, good year? Yeah, good year. And so um, this is $2, two million dollars. Uh, from the federal government. Uh, I've spoken on how these funds should actually be used. And when it comes to affordable housing, the city of Phoenix was very open and honest about the term affordable housing. You cannot, as government entities, dictate the final outcome pricing of once items have been built. All you can do is subsidize it in order to attempt to make it cheaper. However, then it becomes more uh, more uh, uh, unaffordable to other people who don't qualify for these uh, types of um, policies. And so I, I strongly, if you have not read it yet, I strongly encourage you to read former Phoenix Councilman Sal DeCicio's article that he wrote in 2018 that is called Government Profiting Off the Poor, The Need for Modern Government Reform. In this article, he states that the city of Phoenix uh, attempted to build units that would cost the city $150,000 per unit to build, and it wound up being $281,000, and it was not affordable. Uh, it was not, the, the, the units that they built were not um, luxurious, but they were equivalent to the price of luxury. Mr. And Chairman, so- Mr. Chairman, Mr. Caldwell, are, we, are you discussing item 60? Yes. Okay, so that's a, you're discussing Phoenix, but this is Goodyear. Well- What are you talking about? It's the same type of policy that they've implemented previously, which is affordable housing. And there's an article that d describes how the government gets involved. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Call, I'd like to be, this is in one of our districts. I'd like you to talk about if there's something specific about this project. It's gonna make it unaffordable for people. It's gonna be another government entity that comes in and gives money in order to complete projects that is absolutely not going to have an end game that the planners think is going to happen. And so I'm citing sources in order to back up my opinion. Thank you. Leslie Shepard, are you speaking on item 60 or 61? City of Goodyear or Glendale? You have 61 here on your speaker form. I guess, because you, I think you guys changed them, right? Since, well, when did you guys? 60 item, 60 IGA with City of Goodyear? Okay. Yes. 
Okay, the government has a history of multiple projects it undertakes and it drastically increases the cost of projects that the free market could provide at low cost. This is, a, this is rampant within the affordable housing projects. But worst of all, especially in the inflammatory environment we are in, the government getting involved, which is what Jeff said is absolutely true, is ridiculous. And you know when he was citing you those things, Clint Hickman, you brought up one little subdivision of somebody who initiated that thing about the license and you use that as your argument about something that deals with the license plates. And you said it because they were coming into their community. You used an argument that was narrowed down. Can we stay on item? I am getting on track. I'm going to the point that you interrupted him when he was making his point, and you made a point about something that had nothing to do with it, and you made it your valid reason for, uh, for passing the license. So when he's giving his valid point to let you know how they correlate, you should consider those things. Using one community to justify why you implement it through the whole state, what a joke. So if you can't hear his example that Done. seemed to bump outside of it, understand don't play that game with us. Because we see right through you, Hickman. Madam. We already know that you're the most corrupt besides probably Gates. I don't know, Galvin, he he's might be incompetent, but then Galarga, Madam. he's got a Madam. whole can Madam. of worms. Madam, please stay on topic. I'm trying to, you're, you're being totally impolite to me. So please stay on Please stay on topic. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Chairman, next item, item 62, I have speaker forms from Leslie Shepard, Jeff Caldwell in opposition, and Janice Schmidt, speak only if necessary in opposition. So Leslie, you have 62 on your form. Okay, through this agreement, the city's goal is to develop a minimum of 50 transitional housing units and provide a wrap, uh, uh, provide wraparound services to veterans experiencing homelessness and transitioning out of homelessness. The county shall provide the uh, sub reception, uh, recipient of the 300,000 of the American Rescue Plan, ARPA funds. <sighs> Former, Phoenix Council Sal DeCicio wrote an article in 2018 called Government uh, Profiting Off the Poor, the Need of Modern Government Reform. In its article, he explains in Phoenix, local politicians, Hickman, approved the construction of the affordable housing <coughs> apartment project in the land and city already owned. Understandably, this project to be the benefit of the poor was met with widespread community support. The apartments were built quite simply, which should have, have reasonably costed 150,000 per unit to build, but ended up reaching over 281,000 per unit in construction costs. In, in comparison, the medium home price for a single family home in Phoenix was $195,000. Government has a history of multiple projects it takes under and drastically increases the cost of projects that the free market could provide the lower cost. This is, a, this is rampant with the affordable housing projects, but worst of all, especially in the inf, inf, uh, inflationary, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, environment we are in, the government is getting involved in providing these types of things. In other words, you guys, <coughs> you're ripping us off. This is our taxpayer money that you keep passing to do projects that do not help who they claim they're gonna help. We need the, help, the homeless to be helped, not money laundering. The script, you wrote it. Jeff Caldwell will be followed by Ms. Janice Schmidt. Chair Supervisor, so as I was saying previously, this is going to be different. You are going to give them our federal tax dollars as a, in, as a middleman. And what is going to occur is the project is going to become more expensive over time. 
they're going to come back to Maricopa County, they're gonna ask for more money, you're going to have to make another uh, amendment to this agreement, but where's that money gonna come from? Because there's no guarantee that the federal government's gonna have this money readily available. So that is a huge concern that I have with all of the ARPA funds that are being uh, distributed to all these cities to help with homelessness. Homelessness is a rampant problem. I do not believe that the solutions that are being implemented are handling homelessness in a, um, in a manner that will be permanent, and it's going to be an ongoing problem. And I wholeheartedly support getting homelessness taken care of, and they do need help, but, you are accessing funds that are probably a one-time deal for a specific, I think through 2026, you have access to these types of funds. So after 2026, what are you going to do? Are you going to raise our taxes in order to give more money to homelessness? And like Leslie stated, these types of projects wind up being way more expensive uh, than what has been planned. So. I'm truly concerned about the inflationary pressures that this puts on the free market uh, that would give an opportunity for other nonprofit organizations that have done this successfully in multiple areas across the entire United States from successfully implementing policy that really does change and, and help us in the homelessness uh, problems. Thank you. Janice Schmidt. And are you also speaking on the same item 61? Yeah, I'm confused about which agenda item is which because the information we got ahead of time doesn't match what's on the screen, but it all boils down to the same issue is that once again, you're voting for all of these things at once instead of separating them because they are different items. And, um, and I don't understand that policy at all. And, um, and I reiterate everything that Jeff said, that this is just gonna be another waste of tax dollars. It's not gonna actually help the problem with homelessness. We need mental health resources. We need um, drug rehabilitation programs. Just building houses that you're gonna shove people into with government subsidies is not gonna solve the problem. It's just gonna make people more dependent on the government instead of solving their personal problems and getting them mentally healthy and off the streets. So I, I wish that you would not approve these, um, these waste of our taxpayer dollars. Thank you. The board will now consider items 58 through 64. Mr. Chairman, I would be honored to make the motion to approve items 58 through 64, which is just a quick comment. If you look at these IGAs, uh, various uh, areas of government from school districts, municipalities. I've always said this, it takes a village. It takes a village to address some of the most uh, difficult uh, issues and challenges facing uh, the people of Maricopa County. And that's what you're saying exactly that. It's multiple levels of government coming together, maximizing their resources, putting their heads together, addressing some of these tough issues. Anything from uh, uh, retire, uh, retired uh, or retirees and seniors, homeless veterans. We have children with disabilities, food insecurities, kindergarten, Head Start. These are all different areas uh, throughout the county that we are partnering up to, with to address some of these issues. These are wraparound services. This isn't just housing. These are wraparound services. These are substance abuse. This is mental health. This is everything put together that we're going in. We're maximizing our resources. Uh, so I am just thrilled to see so many different partners throughout the county, so many different governments coming together to address some of the critical issues facing the people of Maricopa County. I am honored to make the motion. Thank you, Supervisor. We have a motion. I'll make a second with a comment. This is item 58 through 64, correct? Correct. Um, thank you, Steve. I, I think you've well said on some of the things that we are, we are trying to accomplish with our federal tax money to coming back uh, here to, to utilize for different municipalities and, and especially this county. So I appreciate your words. Um, I do wanna point out 64 just as a little trip down memory lane. Um, when I was appointed uh, to this board, uh, this, this was one of the first things that I was able to accomplish with 
with the board previously, which was the moratorium on rules and regulations and regulatory burdens. I came onto this, uh, onto this dais uh, hearing loud and clear uh, that we, we were having a problem with regulations just almost overrunning us on, on, on what was occurring in this, st in this state with, uh, and the growth and the, and the burdens that was putting on the taxpayer. Uh, so we voted and created a system now uh, that reg any new regulations uh, has to go through, for us to consider, has to go through stakeholder groups so they can see what these regulations are about and if they will be helpful or hurtful or if sh we should implement them. And that has created, a, in this uh, form of government, a basically the greatest effect where we can study things before we bless them or don't bless them. And it will be, we can find out if it's a beneficial regulation versus just an added burden to, uh, to business and the citizens. So I wanna, I wanna thank the previous boards for hearing this. And I wanna thank you, Mr. Chairman, for realizing it was about to sunset. I wanna thank the agencies because it creates extra work for the agencies to put these stakeholder groups together and get the citizens to come in and take a look at these regulations uh, before we either bless them or not. Uh, lots of them don't rise to the occasion of this board. Um, so that is where freedom rings and I, appreci I, appreciate, uh, I appreciate that. So Mr. Chairman, I think I gave a- You gave a second, yes. Any other comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, under procurement, item 65, air quality tenant improvements. Under public defense services, item 66, amend the title 4E, federal entitlement funding contract. Under public health, item 67 through 70, amend agreements, contracts, and IGAs with Northern Arizona University, CDC Foundation, Provider Tech LLC, Arizona Board of Regents. Item 71, accept grant, accept grant funds from the Department of Health and Human Services. We have no speakers on this, so I will entertain a, a motion on item 65 through 71. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve item 65 through 71. Second. second. I have a second from Supervisor Gates. Any, any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under public health continued, item 72, Agreement with Crichton Elementary School District. Item 73, certification of non-debarment or suspension for grant application. Item 74 through 77, IGAs with Arizona Department of Health Services, Arizona Department of Economic Security, and Arizona Board of Regents. Item 78 through 79, MOUs with United Prevention, 3PC, Peoria Primary Prevention, Arizona Department of Health Services. Items 80 and 81, purchase orders for IGAs with Arizona Department of, of Services. The board will now consider item 72 through 70, item 72 through 81. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under transportation, patent easement abandonment, road file number PAB-0231 is item 82. 83 is IGA with City of Surprise. 84, Federal Highway Administration, Federal Aid Project Agreement. Items 85 through 88, transfer of county right of way to the City of Glendale as listed on the agenda. Item 89, easement right of way, relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 82 through 89. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 82 through 89. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. 
That motion carries. Under setting of hearings, transportation, items 90 through 93, the road files as listed on the agenda. The board will now consider items 90 through 93. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll make the motion because it's again all in my district. <laughs> Thank you. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Second. I gave that one to Supervisor Gallardo, Bill. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Under consent agenda, item 94, duplicate warrants. Items 95 and 96, donations. I item 97, stale dated warrants. 98, Head Start program reports. 99, minutes. Item 100, Redemption of waivers for individuals and organizational exemptions. Item 101, Treasurer's Collection and Disbursement Summary. Item 102, Secured Unsecured Tax Roll Corrections. The board will now consider items 94 through 102. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 94 through 102. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, continuing under consent agenda, item 103, special taxing districts, district canvas of elections. Item 104, abstract of the rule containing the valuation by taxing jurisdictions of all property in the county. Item 105, delinquent property tax interest waiver. Item 106, tax abatement. The board will now consider items 103 through 106. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Continuing consent agenda, item 107, settlement resolution of property tax cases and claims. Supervisor Gates will Mr. recuse himself on this item. That's correct, Mr. Chair. The board will now consider item 107. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve item 107. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Supervisor Gates can rejoin us. Okay, under Board of Supervisors addendum, Board of Supervisors 108, Resignation of Sheriff Paul Penzone. Mm. Under County Party Attorney. <laughs> Under County Attorney 109, Quarterly RICO Expenditure Application, Item 110, Competition Impracticable. Under Transportation, Item 111, Settlement in Maricopa County versus C.B. Hamstra, Trustee et al. The board will now consider items 108 through 111. Mr. Chairman, I motion to approve items 108 through 111. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will second it. Just a quick comment uh, uh, to uh, Sheriff Paul Penzone. Thank you for the service of Maricopa County, the people of Maricopa County. Uh, it is not uh, easy to throw your name out there and run for office, and he did, and he won. Um, the people of Maricopa County voted him in, and he has served uh, the sheriff's office with, uh, with uh, so much pride and dignity. He has just been a stellar sheriff. I wish him well in his new venture. I understand he's taken on, but I just want to thank him for his service. I think we're going to have more work to do in regards to this area, but I just want to thank Sheriff Penzone for his service. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All Mr. Those Chair? Yes. Go ahead, Bill. If I might just briefly, I wanted to echo um, Supervisor Gallardo's comments and in particular acknowledge uh, Sheriff Penzone and the entire Sheriff's Office for the incredible support of our elections workers and elections infrastructure, both in 2020 and in 2022. The partnership between the Board of Supervisors, the Recorder, and Sheriff Penzone was critical in holding uh, this process together, our election system, and I wish him the very best. Thank you, Bill. 
Mr. Chairman, um, I was one wondering then also, will we be expecting out of you how, how you would like to continue on with the process of a selection of a, of a new sheriff if, if yes, so desired? Yes, as soon as we vote. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, the information on how to send letters of interest or resumes will be released later today. So if you know of someone interested in applying for that position, uh, that information will be released later today. And I, I will just make a quick comment about uh, Sheriff Penzone myself. I, I know that when, uh, when those of us on this board were getting death threats, the sheriff took all that very seriously. And, uh, and in fact, he provided protection for me that I did not ask for. Uh, I, I think that we went through some very rough times and uh, the sheriff was, was always there for us and I really appreciate that. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Speaking of that, I, I, I do wanna uh, say my appreciation both Sheriff Penzone and our, our protective services as well as, as well as Maricopa County Sheriff's Department uh, for that time frame and, and others. Um, he was uh, very um, supportive of going out to Sun City, Sun City West, where he was basically the police chief of unincorporated areas. Um, he, would, he would get my phone calls quite often, and he's put some really great uh, command staff out there uh, to make sure that uh, people's health, safety, and welfare are protected. And I appreciate it. I appreciate his, t I appreciate his time and service uh, to this county and ICE and uh, who we decide to appoint. Thank you. Okay. We will now recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Improvement District Board of Directors. The board will now consider item 112. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 112. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Improvement District Board of Directors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Under Flood Control District, item no number 113, declare sell excess parcel, item 114, resolution for Elliott Road drainage improvements, item 115, escrow agreement for the release and termination of floodway fringe easement, Item 116, sell excess parcel. Item 117, minutes. Item 118, easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. Item 119, change order to job order contract. The board will now consider items 113 through 119. Mr. Chairman, I approve motion to approve 113 through 119. Make a motion to approve, I'm sorry. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as the Library District Board of Directors. The board will now consider items 120 through 122. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve items 120 through 122. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just call out the friends of the Sun City Libraries. Uh, there is a lot of readers out there and they are incredible <coughs> participants in our library system with their volunteer work that's uh, almost been since time eternal since we first built the first library out there. So I wanna thank them uh, because they truly do bring volunteer. You know, the Sun City is, a, is the is the city of volunteers and with that group, you can really see it when you visit that library uh, that almost promotes yourself as, as a reader again. If, and uh, I, I appreciate the work and, and here they are now again, uh, putting money towards it um, from the residents uh, to support that library. So I appreciate them. Thank I appreciate you, all of them. Okay. We will now adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors and convene as the Stadium Director District Board of Directors the board will now consider item 123. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of 123. Item 123. Second. We have a motion second. and a second. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We will now adjourn as the Stadium Dir District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Madam Clerk, do we have anything to report regarding public comment, email responses? Chairman and Supervisors, we did receive one email regarding several of the agenda items and that email with those comments have been shared with all of the board offices. I do have a few speaker forms that I will bring to you for um, requests to speak. Okay, thank you. Okay, for public comments, uh, we have a number of, of speaker forms here, so I would just ask you all to please be respectful of everyone's time and do not make repetitive comments. Uh, you know, I wanna listen to all of you, uh, so please be as, as succinct and brief as you can be. The first speaker is Leslie's. And there is a two minute time limit per speaker. <clears throat> no, I haven't started speaking. That timer's going and I'm not even talking. I will respect that at the end. If you wanna start now, please. Can't we just start it over so we don't have to worry about haggling? I won't haggle with you unless you keep talking now. Okay. All right, so what you all have there that I handed you, it says, says U.S. Constitution, Article 2, Section 4, the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states. Therefore, all constitutional, right here, it says all constitutional things or even in different states apply to us. South Carolina Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, elections shall be by secret ballot, protection of, of right of suffrage. All elections by the people shall be a secret ballot, but the ballot should not be counted in secret. The right of the suffrage is regulated in the Constitution, shall be protected by the laws, regulated elections, and prohibiting under adequate penalties, all undue influence of power, bribery, tumult, and improper conduct. Now I'm gonna take you down to, so that lets us know, secret ballot. Those machines, the minute they go in, we don't know what happened to our vote. One day, one vote, paper ballot, hand count. Here's another constitutional law that supports that. It's not a slogan, it's an actual constitutional law. Arizona Constitution, Article 7, Section 11, general elections. It says the date there should be general, uh, a general election of the representatives in Congress and of the state, country, and precinct officers. That's one of the only things that's involved in our elections lately that's actually right. There should be precinct officers. First Tuesday after the uh, first Monday in November. That's the Arizona Constitution. This right here says you cannot take my water. Article two, section four. Five of these were eaten by one of the people in here. This got through, but we couldn't bring our basic water. We need you guys to understand that child sex slavery is affected by fraudulent elections. Children are being raped while we're talking. Their guts are being cut open and their organs being sold. Elections are serious matter. We need you to stick to the constitution. You will be responsible okay. for God Almighty. Thank you. How do I know that that was my minutes? See, that's why I said to reset it, so you guys wouldn't do this haggling thing. 
Re Revelations 2.20. You know, you're, you're talking Christ about things. Hold you responsible. You're, you're talking about things that uh, we've already taken care of, so please don't. You have not taken care of it. We still have oh, issues God. involved in our elections. We still have election yeah. interference. Please. Cutting into everyone's time. Jerome Davis. I don't see a Jerome Davis. Roger P. Good morning, Chair, Supervisors. Roger Pickerel. And, a, and a, I usually don't need these, but that's okay. I want to speak about the writ of quo warranto that we presented to the court system by the authors and creators of Daniel Clayton Woods, Sue Juris, Deborah Ann Boehm, Sue Juris, Brian Edward Steiner, Sue Juris, and Joseph Michael Grimm, Sue Juris. Authorized King James Version Romans 13.1.2, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they resist, and that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Maxims of Law, Charles A. Wiseman, 1990, says, Maximum 51.0, All political power is inherent in the people by decree of God. Thus none can exist except it by derived from them. American Maxim. Maxim 51K states, the law is not to be violated by those in government. Jen sent seven. The Horns Lessie versus Dorrance, 2 U.S. 304 and 308 in 1795. The Constitution is certain and fixed. It contains the permanent will of the people. N is the supreme law of the land. It is paramount to the power of the legislature and can be revoked and alter or altered only by the authority that made it. We the people, Daniel Clayton Wood, Joseph Michael Grimm, Brian Edward Steyers, Deborah Dan Bellin, and being an advocate here in Arizona individually do gather to trust protectors to command the unanimous declaration of this writ of quo parton. We the people state that all trustee servants and all members of the government are in absolute breach and contempt Thank you, Roger. of the Arizona United States constitutions and are without authority. The United States of America and Arizona governments in whole have been and currently are operating and unconstitutional form of the government. Thank you, Roger. And state bar holders, they include conspiracy, subversion, and insurrection, sedition, and treason. These are malicious acts harming the people. <laughs> Sorry, I my tongue got caught. My eyes just didn't finish what I was saying. I wasn't good. God bless. Cerise. Good morning. Continuing with the writ. Whereas the state and federal legislative, executive, and judicial branches and all its members did not comply or take the required oath to satisfy Article 6 of the United States Constitution, this mandatory oath is prescribed in statutes at large, Stat 23, giving the time, manner, and place to administer the oath to wit. There is no record or certificate which would provide evidence of constitutional authority. Therefore, all government officials, all members within the United States of America and within the states have no authority to be seated, take office, receive compensation, or discharge any duties of any office, state or federal. We the people have shown in a court of record by way of writ of prohibition, writ of subpoena, deuces tecum, and writ of contempt of subpoena, deuces tecum, elected or appointed, whichever the case may be, have not taken the required oath or oaths mandated in the United States Constitution. We the people hereby declare that the government as a whole is dissolved. This is now the declared, 
It is now declared that we the people will reform our republic and establish new civic authority to the original constitutional republic. <clears throat> Statutes at large one, stat 23, article six requires the oath to wit that I, A, B, do solemnly swear or affirm, as the case may be, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Furthermore, the President of the United States is required to take the United States Article II oath to satisfy its requirements to be the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Armed Forces. <clears throat> the public administration of this oath by Chief Justice Roberts of the Supreme Court has not been satisfied. The required form of the oath was not administered properly Thank and you. is void. Thank you. Jody B. And behind her will be Laura W. Here and attached in the Superior Court of Maricopa County, Arizona, as case number CV2023-093987, originally began as a constitutional question involving electoral, electoral due process. As a result of esqui and your usurpation of the Constitutional Judicial Court of Record, it was revealed that all elections have been subverted, both past and present, by way of executive orders, acts, and legislation. The following aided in the subversion of the people's elections, government officials, its members, corporations, agencies, associations, and parties. Since 2002, under the con unconstitutional Help America Vote Act, which is HAVA. The people's elections have been null and void because the elections were not constitutional. Those who are elected or appointed are usurping and lacking constitutional authority to carry out duties in the people's Republican form of, re of government. Through conspiracy and subversion of the people's elections, the government acting as a whole are warring against the constitutions, thus committing treason against the people. We the people do declare that all elections since 2002 have been and are unconstitutional. The people do declare that our Republican form of government has been vacated. See remonstrance by affidavit, original writ, and the writ of default. And I did give you some uh, champagne. I thought I could um, see something different from you all. I thought we could have a celebration for New Year and that you would hopefully be for the people, but apparently you are not. So I want my champagne back. Um, you are so still going evil against the people, not going with God. Say it. Say it. Laura, next up will be Roger L. Continuing the document, whereas executive orders, acts, and legislation which were created unconstitutionally by government officials and members thereof redelegated powers through the National Industrial Recovery Act, NIRA, through the NIRA, the Administrative Act, and Administrative Procedures Act. The people's life, liberty, private affairs, and property have been deceitfully imposed upon. These executive orders, acts, and legislation are in direct violation of the state and federal mandatory constitutional provisions establishing the separation of powers. These executive orders, acts, and legislation have created unconstitutional administrations and agencies through the subverting of the Republican form of government into a democracy. The current unconstitutional democratic form of government is by way of tyranny being deceitfully imposed upon the people. See the following, the June 1933, uh, article National Industrial Recovery Act without having authority created the National Recovery Act. In 1935, the United States Supreme Court unanimously decided in Sheckler Poultry Corporation First United States 291.US117 that the National Recovery Act is unconstitutional. It was determined by the Supreme Court that even though they, in their opinion, ruled these acts as unconstitutional, it was up to the people to abolish all unconstitutional acts. We the people here and now declare these unconstitutional 
traditional acts abolished. Sheckler Poultry Corporation versus United States 291.US117. It is a continuing and vital principle that the people are free to withdraw authority which they have conferred, and when withdrawn, neither Congress nor the courts can assume the right to continue to exercise it. P291, US226. See attached to original writ, writ of default judgment, writ of prohibition, writ of ducis tectum, writ of contempt of ducis tectum, and writ of contempt of the Arizona United States Constitution, remonstrances, notices, and affidavits. Thank you. So Roger, and then Don Adams. <clears throat> Continuing, writ of order, quoting from authorized King James Version, Ezra, chapter seven, verse 26, I quote, and whoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him whether it be unto death, or to banishment, or to confiscation of goods, or to imprisonment." Close quote. We the people, having all political power inherent to us by God Almighty and being creators of the United States and state constitutions and by our will, reestablished our constitutional Republican form of government by way of a new guard civil authority. We the people hereby invoke our responsibilities as trust protectors. We the people hereby issue this writ of quo warranto and command our armed forces of the United States and Arizona militia to arrest this insurrection immediately. We the people command our armed forces of the United States, the Arizona militia to discharge all federal and state elected and appointed members immediately. This is a matter of necessity and is essential for the people to reestablish this republic to its original form. We the people command our armed forces of the United States and the Arizona militia to assist in providing a continuity of government throughout the federal and state governments in coordination with the people. The people by way of writ of election will assemble and begin the reforming process of reestablishing their Republican form of government. Furthermore, it is ordered that the armed forces of the United States and Arizona militia are to provide protection at all polling locations in Arizona during the people's election process. Thank you, Don Adams, and then Ray Michaels. We the people command our Air Force of the United States and the Arizona militia without delay to conduct military tribunals and hold all these responsible for sedition, subversion, conspiracy, and insurrection and treason against the United States, Arizona, and the people as the inhabitants within. Romans 2, 12, and 13, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Dated the 8th of no November, 20, in the year of our Lord, 2023, my solemn asseveration with God and the Father as our witness by a living soul in the form of a man, one of the people created by God, the trinity of heart, mind, and soul with the court of conscience. This instrument was prepared as my free will act and deed executed below under my hand and seal. Psalms 118, 19 through 24, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go on into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation, the stone which the builder refuses is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. 
Ray Michaels, and then Michelle Stapley. Chair board members, uh, Ray Michaels, LDA chair. Um, I, I want you all to know that we pray for you. Yes. We pray for all of our leaders. We pray for all the people that we the people put in place. And we come to you not as individuals. We're not attacking you on an individual basis. And just as God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin, we love you too, but we are not pleased as we the people on some of the decisions that you've been making. And everybody here today who's speaking, we're here voluntarily. We don't get paid to do this. I have a volunteer position because we are servants. You are here on the public dole. You're paid to be here. And I, I see that Bill Gates has left, but he's supposed to be here. He's supposed to be representing us. I'm not sure where we lost our way, where we, where we forgot about the foundation of our governmental system, why we left England and why we didn't want to be under that authority. You see, it's God, it's man, it's the law of nature and nature's God, and we create government that is supposed to protect our rights, our liberties, and our freedoms directly from God. Here's a quote from the Bible. I know a lot of people are doing this. This is Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. Either he shall hate the one and love the other, or else he shall lean to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and riches. So I'm wondering, if you hear it from a majority of the people that we're not happy, and we're here voluntarily, I'm just wondering, where did we lose our way? And maybe we can reflect on that. Okay, Michelle Stapley and then Kristen Vale. The love of liberty is interwoven into the soul of man and can never be totally extinguished. There are certain periods when human patience can no longer endure indignity and oppression. The spark of liberty then kindles into a flame. Samuel Adams. On January 1st, 2024, a group of 231 service members and veterans ignited a new spark of liberty through a declaration of military accountability. In this declaration, the signers pledged to hold military leadership accountable for their violations of the law and constitutional rights over the last several years. This petition intends to kindle that spark of liberty into a massive flame. To that end, we hereby pledge our support of this Declaration of Military Accountability and intend to expand this pledge to include holding accountable all those in governmental authority who have abused their positions in unlawful and corrupt ways. We the people are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As the Declaration of Independence notes, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. We no longer consent to the governed by those who use their positions to enrich themselves and who pursue un-American agendas at the expense of the governed. It is our birthright, therefore, as Americans, we demand and enact the changes we require in the government of our nation. I encourage you to look up executive orders. Christian Vale, and, one, three, and next three, up will be Tom Arnold. Okay, next up is Tom Arnold.
And after him is Michelle Aher. Is that Aher? This is my first visit. Um, I'm not familiar with all the procedures. Can you make that higher for him? I just, as, as they've gone through, these, these last ones where they did the proclamation, I would have to read it to sit and listen to it. It was difficult for me, but as, as the addressing of the issues that were from the county, I've been involved with city government for 37 years, and I know the process of change is <laughs> very slow. The issues that you addressed, the, the um, issues that the, the folks raised, I don't know if, if they were taken, even taken in consideration from you folks. Um, I, I appreciate, again, I'm, I'm sorry, it's your, yourself and this gentleman was very attentive to the people who spoke. This gentleman, um, about half, half the time, um, I don't, maybe you were listening, but there was no eye contact. So I don't know if you were interested in the things that the folks had to say. Again, I'm hopeful that the issues that they have before you voted on them, that there may have been some, consid some consideration, but the vote was taken immediately. I hope that's not always the case. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Michelle, and then, um, is it Butch? Yes, please. Michelle Altair, Chairman of uh, Legislative District 23 and candidate, Senate for candidate in that same district. And it's kind of apropos that I'm speaking to the call of the public uh, portion because I'm not actually here to address any of y'all. I'm really not. I'm here to address the public and to let them know there are five seats on the Board of Supervisors that are up for election. And we need people that are principled to come and step up to the plate and, and you know, it's like, yeah, you see things that are wrong, but we need people that with some backbone, with, that, uh, that, are, that are disciples of Christ to rise up in this hour because we are in a spiritual battle. And many will say, well, you know, we, people call themselves Christians. Well, you know, even Jesus said they, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I have the dubious honor in uh, legislation. Of 23, we have gotten writing, writing candidates elected twice. And we do fortunately have one that will be running for District 5 to replace those that I believe are all selected. I do not believe anyone is elected. I do believe selected. So we do have someone who is running by the name of Ann Neiman. And since we can get um, writing candidates elected, we will be getting this candidate who has uh, expressed interest and will be running. So I just called to the public, even just look at your district, see who's running, make sure, don't just because you know their names, because sometimes people, they just run from place to place, running for this office, running for that, and so you know their names from that, but look at their record, look what they stand for, and ensure that you're vetting these candidates well, or we're going to keep having the same thing that we keep had running on a hamster wheel because we keep electing the same people into office. Okay, Butch, and then Kathleen Harrell. <clears throat> Hello. My name is, uh, my correct name is uh, Elwood Kunstler, and uh, I am chair of the uh, Strella Conservative Republican Party and uh, first vice chair of LD23. I come to speak to you today about my fear of losing uh, my republic, uh, which is why I live in the USA. There is a mentally ill person running around. Her name is Candace Zarni, once an LD3 chair. She was fired, long story short, everything was done by law 
by Constitution and by ARS statute, okay? Because of the rule of law, everything came out the way it was supposed to be. Zarni and her supporters are running a liberal slate, okay, of candidates of people who are not Republican. So as a slate of these liberals are trying to take over the MCRC at the meeting on Saturday, they are supported by two LDs, three and four, okay? Every one of their slate candidates is from three and four. So they have no representation from any other LD in Maricopa County. How does that sound? The other slate has five members, all from different LDs. That's the slate I'm gonna be voting for. Little breaking news for y'all. Jeff DeWitt and Marissa Hamilton in the last 24 hours brokered a deal. And Jeff DeWitt offered to pay LDs in Maricopa County money if they signed on to this deal and this agreement that gets Candace Zarni back into the GOP. I want you to think about that because Mr. Hickman, you and Jeff DeWitt have some backdoor secrets of your own. Okay, Kathleen, Harrell, and then Barbara Roddy. Yeah, I I'm Kathleen Harrell. I'm pretty much a nobody. Um, uh, okay, and but I have uh, been a poll worker. My first poll worker in my Arizona, my new state, was when you got elected, and I saw your mother outside rooting for you past the 75 minute line, the mile line, and th that was great because we counted every single ballot. We counted every ballot that we handed out, we counted every ballot that was not filled in, and we turned it in at the end of the night, we had a thing, uh, we had an election. Now we do not have an election. We do not have an election. We have machines that take it away from us. I have. I have worked at the audit. I never saw a folded ballot. Never, ever saw a folded ballot. I folded them, but I never recounted them. No, and when I was doing canvassing, I ran into a little senior uh, living facility, ones that are very active. They had lot, a bigger parking lot than the, the Fry's this, um, grocery store. Well, 55 people out of the 345 uh, residents did not have a complete address listed with the Maricopa County uh, public records. Somehow 47 of those 55 people voted by mail. How did that happen? I think that if we have one illegal ballot, we should that should cause us, you and me, to stop the machines. If we have one disenfranchised voter, it must cause us to call for a new election. Not just call for it, but scream for it because we're being cheated. We are being cheated by the people that run the machines and take care of the ballots. We need to do it ourselves again like we used to. I was proud of Arizona, but now it is an embarrassment to live in Maricopa County. Okay, Barbara and then Jeff Caldwell. <clears throat> I'm Barbara Ratty. I'm here today to inform all about a video regarding our Arizona 2022 elections called State of Denial. It's on Rumble. You will be hearing in this video about the Dominion machines whom we have a third party contract with, which is unconstitutional according to the Arizona Constitution. You will hear Mr. Bill Gates talking about trying to fix things with the machines. In an effort to fix things, ballots are moved to other places and cutting off chain of custody. Machines were not working correctly in 61% of the voting centers, so people were not getting to vote. Ballots being rejected at high amounts for, for machines, printers not working. This creates chaos and long lines with hundreds of people waiting for three and a half hours to vote or not voting at all. Was this created to discourage in-person voting? 
Mr. Richard was asked if there are any problems and he responds with one small thing in a location but not inhibiting people from casting their vote. That was a lie. On election day, 464,926 ballot scans attempts were made. Over 50% had misfeed issues. The election commission limits misfeed issues to one in 50 ballots. Maricopa's misfeeds were one in two ballots. They did not test the machines they were used on election day, which is mandatory mandatory requirement. They only tested five spares. They should have tested and verified the ones being used because if they don't pass the L and A test, they cannot be used. The video shows that Mr. Gates claimed that the machines were tested through and through. That was not true. Machines rejected 180,894 in-person ballots on the election day out of 248,000 total cast. That is a 72% error rate. Mr. Gates and Mr. Richard considered that a hiccup. Tabulators rejected over 7,000 ballots every 30 minutes in about 60% of the voting centers. Many did not get to vote because the machines rejected their ballots. Thank you. Jeff Caldwell. Chair Supervisors, to be clear, my comment is a direct criticism over the scheme created by Maricopa County of who is the official officer over our elections. Since Bill Gates was assigned by Chair Sellers, um, oversight over the elections, who is the official officer on record for the election operations? The MOU creates a confusing framework of responsibility. Scott Jarrett is the election director, but then Bill Gates' chief of staff has oversight over him, and then he reports to the county recorder, who then reports to you, the Board of Supervisors. But last week, you assign Bill Gates since he's not running for re-election. Does Stephen Richer oversee his own election? Hmm. He is running for office. To be clear, this is a direct criticism over your decision to appoint Bill Gates over the elections as creating a confusing scheme so that it's unclear who is the official officer over the elections. Hmm. Additionally, Bill Gates Bill Gates' response to the printer issues on election day was a misinformation video telling voters they could leave after checking in and did not talk about checking out prior to leaving. Huge problem. This suppressed many voters. We talked to many people who decided not to vote because they saw on the news that there was major problems and long lines. According to the Ombudsman's guidance, Chair, you can respond to criticism during public comment period. Chairman, please declare to us here today who is the official election official Official election official, there you go. Overseeing the election, thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, I just wanna have a discussion with you real quick. Um, and I, I know I was chairman last year and quite often, and quite often when in a chairman's address, you're able to uh, ask your colleagues to help you in certain right areas. The corner, let him so, run the meeting. You're sitting here handling him. He could have answered the question. Be quiet, God. Uh, so Jack, Jack, I want to, I want to let you know, I appreciate you asking me. Okay. Any more outburst? I'll ask you to leave the meeting. Uh, thank you. Ja I appreciate you asking me to throw myself back at workforce development on that same speech, and I know that you're asking all of us to be able to look into our lives and be able to perform some functions for you, but that doesn't mean you're defecting. Or, or overstepping the bounds of running something. You're just asking us for, your, for our help, if we can give it. So I wanna be clear, that's the way I understood it with Bill Gates. He has some experience, he was an election law lawyer. You've asked things for Tom to do for you. You've asked things uh, from Steve, Steve Garrow to help with the homelessness situation that he's thrown himself in. So I just wanna make sure that I know you've been very clear about that, okay? Thank you. One more outburst and you will leave the room. You know, I, I have been very patient with all of you, uh, but you're making it difficult. 
Next up is Mike, and I can't. That's it. Public comment. We we do not respond. To, we do not respond to public comments in our meeting. Who is in charge of the elections is very, very clear if you do your homework. Next up. Okay, please remove her. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Security. Yeah. Mike, I cannot make out the last name on the sheet. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, I'd like to apologize for my scratchy voice. I've had seven packs of Reese's now, and I'm really in need of some water. Some water would have been nice. But back to the, oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, back to the issue at hand. We know that the election is coming up, the primary. We got four rhinos up here coming up for August re, for August re-election. No, three because of Mr. Not in the meeting not being there. And what we're also looking at is how many headaches as a poll worker have I had to deal with? How many headaches as a suicide hotline staffer have I deal, had to deal with that were caused by you guys from people that have lost their way of life, they've lost their hope, their liberty, any chance at normalcy? And then all of a sudden they have to deal with that drama. I have to deal with that drama. Clearly you're not dealing with that drama because it's obvious that these guys want all of you. Look at yourselves, you're happy, you're strong. I look in your eyes and I see hopes, I see fears, I see kindness, I see passion and I see joy. I look at these guys and I listen to their voices and they're 620, they're 625, count them, eyes, they have said today, with cold, lifeless, dead voices, eyes, and not a single nay the entire time we've been here. And that is why I'm thinking about this and you guys, and you in particular, Thomas Galvin, are going to get put in the same position we are when Michelle Eugenti Rita, who I look at, and I don't see a cold, dead-eyed weakling. I see someone with fire and passion that wants to fight for us and wants to give us hope. And I'm looking forward to her putting you in all of our situation. I am so looking forward to her putting you out of a job. Remember the name Michelle Eugenti Rita come August and that she's running against well, this thing. Thank you. Luke Portel. I'm sorry, what was yeah. your name, sir? Yeah, what's your name? Wow, yeah, I never heard that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess somebody's got to take over for Daniel Wood and Lewis Herms. <laughs> somebody's got to put in the work. But anyway, um, I just want to let everybody know, everybody keeps talking about the election. Um, I just want to make it clear that it was Donald Trump and Carrie Lake that endorsed it, and not one MAGA Republican or so-called MAGA conservative helped us with 2289. I was part of the grassroots that led that effort. We busted our butts on that bill, and the three people that worked hard on that bill all got prim primary by the Trump cabal. Jeff DeWitt and Christian Lamar need to resign immediately. Instead of running around on Twitter all the time and tweeting up a storm, he should be here. DeWitt should be here, but you know, who cares about him? So, yep, so I just wanna go over something really quick before uh, my one minute and 18 minutes runs out. So, we have to ask ourselves, what is law? Well, law is a very simple thing. So you have common law, which is property rights, patent grants, things we own, stuff of that nature, right? Then you have canon law, which is trust law. All things are held in a trust. Everything is held in a benefit to another, which is our heirs. What are heirs? Our future heirs, right? Genesis 126 to 25, that's pretty much what God taught, God taught law. And then you get to the, the W. You have contract law or admiralty law, things held in a contract with another. There are eight elements to a contract. Now, can a man do a contract with a man? Obviously, yes. Now, can a man do a, con uh, can a, man do a contract with a corporation? Obviously, no. Why? 
because of that. America is a corporation. Washington DC is a lost entity that has lost its sea and it has been for 165 years. And understand why they're getting away with doing this because everything that we are seeing is a lie and it's not real. Uh, next up is Elwood. Okay, uh, Michelle. Michelle Alp. Althier, Florence Smith. After the 2020 election, I did a lot of research, especially reading affidavits that people had written who were there, and um, I turned my research into a book. It's Testimony of Fraud um, in the 2020 uh, Michigan election, listening to those who were there. And uh, one of the chapters deals with machines. Machines are a big problem. I, I really hope that you can do something about it. I'm just gonna give a few examples of things that machines do. Here is, um, well, hundreds of years when we voted, we never had fractional votes. If you look at this, all the votes are fractional. How does that happen? Well, look carefully at the line that's in white. Um, this is when one vote comes in. What is the one vote? Who is it for? It's 66% um, for Joe Biden and 32% for Trump. That's what happens when you have fractional votes. In Windham County, um, New Hampshire, um, the votes that came in were folded and along the fold line, um, there was a votable bubble. And so all the votable bubbles um, counted as a vote, even though people did not mark them. So um, they also ran them through different machines to see if they would come out the same. And they got all sorts of different results, so the machines did not come out the same in there. There's also vid video on the um, internet of poll po um, pads, which um, a, a lady was recording to s see how many people had voted at their uh, poll, and all of a sudden, the poll starts going and going and it's adding numbers to it. And you can hear in the background, it was happening to all the people, all the poll workers were having numbers added to their polls. There's another YouTube that shows an election supervisor. Uh, that, oh. Thank you. And, and I'll just make one more comment. I, I think that I have really tried to be as patient as possible today. I've tried to listen to every speaker that we've had. I will not tolerate disruptive outburst. That, that's not what this meeting is about. If, if that's what you come here for, then you will be excluded from the meeting, just so everyone knows. Okay, we will now move to supervisor summary of current events. County manager. Nothing today, chairman, thank you. Supervisor Hickman. I was trying to get you under 12 at, at noon, so nothing today, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Supervisor Galvin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Congratulations on your first meeting. I think you handled it with dignity and aplomb. Um, just wanna say last night I spoke at the Lions Club at Leisure World, wonderful people, great questions. Um, earlier this week I attended the Governor's State of the State speech in the East Valley. I was really disappointed that Governor Hobbs made no mention of elections of our election workers who have been through a lot, not just in Maricopa County, but in all 15 counties. And um, I also attended the Chamber's Legislative Forecast Luncheon. I think uh, Speaker um, Toma and Senate President Peterson made some very good arguments about why they have an agenda for this year's legislative session. And I hope Governor Hobbs works with them. And I wish all the luck to the legislature and to our leadership at the state capitol because our state needs it. Thank you. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I too would like to congratulate you on your first meeting. Uh, you handled it uh, uh, very well. Uh, it's not easy. I know when people are, are not really talking about issues but throwing rocks at us, and, 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 but you handled it well. Let everyone have their, 
their uh, their opportunity to speak at the podium. Uh, I do want to go back just from the beginning of the meeting. I know we had the the resolutions being passed around for us to sign on stand up, speak out, and how important it is. I, it is it is so critical for our young people now. I will I I will advocate for young people till the day I die. I really will because I see the challenges every day that they face. But it, but one of the things that that caught me too, and it got me thinking as I was coming in, was that. Yes, it's focused on the campus, but that particular statement even takes part off campus. These kids are facing and seeing so many things right now that it's important for us to not only offer support and encouragement and helping our young people, but really to um, to uh, talk about the importance of, of of supporting your young classmates, helping your younger brothers and sisters and, and, and relatives and so on. So it, it's so important for us to continue that message. It shouldn't just be on on in January where we honor uh, Stand Up Speak Out. It should be, it's year round. It's year round that we continue to have that message and continue to push that. So I wanna thank you once again, Mr. Chairman, for placing it on the uh, agenda. I think we've had it for, for quite so many years now. And I, I think we, can, we should continue to do it and continue to work with our school districts. So many school districts have joined in, signed up. I remember it was just what, probably one school district or two, and now you have uh, literally almost hundreds of them that have signed up. So that's a, that's, that's a great, um, great news there. I do wanna, uh, I know we're gearing up uh, this weekend, the three-day weekend, uh, honoring uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. I'll be participating in a number of events, uh, uh, starting with our very own this, uh, this uh, Thursday up on the second floor with uh, our county employees. Uh, we have these luncheon, that luncheon sold out in hours. I mean, it just packed the room yeah, so quickly. So I look forward uh, to having our MLK luncheon on the second floor. And, and throughout the whole weekend, there's the breakfast in, uh, uh, on Friday morning as well. Um, and then we have the march and the celebration uh, Monday morning as well at, uh, at uh, Mayor Hans Park. So, so much going on, but I just wanna wish everyone a safe uh, three day holiday and uh, look forward to a, a great year. Thank you, Supervisor. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. I, when I spoke at an event recently, I said, when a politician says, I'll be brief, you should make yourself comfortable. <laughs> but uh, I, I really am very involved in my community. I, I go around to a lot of events just so I can listen to all of our constituents and our leadership in, in all those different communities. I attended the East Valley Ch uh, Chamber Alliance legislative reception recently, the Tempe State of the State address, uh, the Arizona Highway Users Legislative Reception, uh, the GPEC International Leadership Council, uh, the Chandler Chamber Meet the Elected Officials Breakfast, the 2024 Legislative Forecast Luncheon uh, by the Arizona Chamber at Chase Field, and yesterday the East Valley uh, Breakfast with the Governor. Uh, I, I guess one of the things I was very impressed with uh, in, in all the things that I've been involved in recently was I attended something called the I Am Home Breakfast. And you know, anyone that, that doubts that there are advances being made in addressing our homeless situation and our affordable housing situation, uh, they needed to hear that the message that I heard at that breakfast that morning. You know, there's a lot left to be done. As I said in my chairman's speech, there's no silver bullet. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, but we are making progress. Our, our human services uh, department here is phenomenal in, in ensuring that what they're doing is really gonna make a difference. So anyway, thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.